everyone welcome back to sudesh pharma world today i am going to talk to you about tixotropy tixotropy is an isothermal and comparatively slow recovery on standing of a material of a consistency lost through shearing this is the definition of tixotropy here you can see the definition tixotropy is defined as an isothermal and comparatively slow recovery on standing of a material of a consistency lost to shearing now i'm going to explain this tixotropy in a very simple manner as we all know what are shear thinning systems shear thinning system means when we are applying a stress or a load on a particular system its consistency will be decreases its viscosity decreases such types of systems are known as shear thinning systems this shear thinning systems when agitated and kept aside for a long time the system return to its original state of fluidity but it takes longer time as compared to the time taken for agitation it takes longer time to recover as compared to the time taken for agitation this process is known as tixotropy for example flocculated particles containing concentrated suspension when we are applying stress on a particular system when we are applying stress on a concentrated suspension and this suspension contain dispersed particles as flocculates this flocculated particles undergo structural breakdown when we are applying stress on a system the dispersed particles may undergo structural breakdown because of the structural breakdown viscosity of the system decreases uh, then we are allowing the suspension to stand still uh, for a long time then structural build up may occur and uh, it regain its original consistency the system return to its original state of fluidity by structural build up okay so this a uh, process is known as tixotropy as i already told you that the it will take a longer time for the recovery it will take longer time for the recovery as compared to the time taken for agitation this process is known as tixotropy the phenomena of tixotropy can be observed by constructing consistency curves or rheogram we know what is consistency curves or what is this rheogram the shear stress shear rate relationship expressed with the help of a graph that graph is known as a rheogram or it is also called as consistency curves here you can see a consistency curve or rheogram for both the plastic and pseudo plastic systems okay this tixotropic behavior can be best explained by constructing a rheogram for that uh, particular material here in this rheogram you can see the rate of shear is progressively increases with the shear stress and this shear stress is measured with the help of a suitable instrument then we will get some reading and this readings are plotted will get this up curve shear rate shear rate increases progressively with the shear stress and we are measuring both the shear stress and shear rate and then we are plotted this reading on a graph paper then we'll get this uh, up curve that is ab from this desired maximum shear rate if the shear rate then decreases we'll get this down curve the down curve is bc first of all the shear rate will increases progressively with the shear stress then this shear stress and shear rate readings plotted on a graph will get this up curve ab ab is the up curve from this desired maximum b then shear rate if the shear rate decreases from the desired maximum b if the shear rate decreases then we will get this down curve that is bc okay now this is a rheogram for plastic system in non newtonian fluids the down curve is frequently displaced to the left of the up curve this is our up curve and this one is a down curve in non newtonian fluids the down curve is frequently displaced to the left of this up curve and this figure shows that 
The down curve has low consistency at one right of shear compared to that it had on the up curve. Okay. So in the case of non-Newtonian fluids, the down curve is frequently displaced to the left of the up curve. And it shows low consistency compared to the up curve. But in Newtonian fluids, both the down curve and up curve are superimposed. So this are the rheogram that explain the thixotropic behavior. Now I am going to explain thixotropy in terms of particle-particle interaction. At rest, during storage, these particles impart rigidity to a particular system through multi-point contacts. Now the system behaves like a gel. Okay, now the system behaves like a gel. It has high consistency, it has high viscosity. Because of this multi-point contact, the system behaves like a gel and it has high consistency. Now we are going to apply a stress on this system. Okay, upon applying stress on this system, this multi-point contacts will be breaking down. Okay, so the system now converted into a solid state. Initially, it behaves like gel. While applying stress to a particular, by applying stress to this particular system, this multi-point contacts will be breaking down. Structural breakdown will be occur. So it is converted into solid state. From the gel state, it is converted into solid state. Now the consistency will be decreases. And so it has low consistency. It has low viscosity. Okay. Then we are allowing the system to stand still for a long time. Then the system uh, will uh, return to its original state of fluidity by imparting multi-point contacts. Due to Brownian motion, multi-point contacts will be uh, build up, structural build up will be occur, then it is again converted into gel state. Because of the Brownian motion, multi-point contacts will be build up, and uh, its consistency will be increases, its viscosity will be increases and it behaves like a gel. Okay. But this recovery process will take longer time as compared to the time taken for agitation or as, as compared to the uh, time uh, taken to lose the consistency. As compared to the time taken to lose the consistency by applying stress. This process is not instantaneous. It will take longer time to return to its original state of fluidity. If the system is more viscous or it contains larger particles, then it is very difficult to re-establish the original state of fluidity through Brownian motion. So it will take longer time uh, to return to its original state of fluidity. This gel Salt gel transformation is known as thixotropy. This is particle particle interaction in terms of thixotropy. Now I am going to explain the measurement of thixotropy. And here we are going to study three important methods for the measurement of thixotropy. The first one is with the help of a planimeter, we are going to measure the thixotropic structural breakdown. As we know, in a thixotropic system, the hysteresis loop is formed with the help of both the up curve and down curve. Okay, the up curve and down curve of the rheogram that form hysteresis loop. Here you can see a hysteresis loop for a plastic system. Uh, this is the material which shows thixotropic behavior. Okay, so this up curve and down curve that forms hysteresis loop. With the help of a planimeter, we can measure the area of the hysteresis loop. The area of hysteresis loop has been proposed as a measure of structural thixotropic breakdown. So the first method is that with the help of a planimeter, we can measure the thixotropic structural breakdown. So this is the first method. And the second method, let's see what is the second method. Before that, I will uh, tell you something uh, regarding the rheogram. 
the rheogram of a thixotropic material that largely depends on the rate at which shear is increased or decreased. Okay, here you can see a rheogram for plastic system. In this figure, it shows that the rate of shear is progressively increases with the shear stress at a particular rate. Okay, here the shear rate increases progressively up to a point B, then it decreases. So, we'll get a rheogram A, B, E. The first rheogram that is A, B, E. Now, I'm going to maintain this shear rate constant for T1 second. Okay, listen. Now, I'm going to maintain this shear rate at the point B for T1 second. Then, I'll get another rheogram that is A, B, C and E. A, B, C, E. The second rheogram is that A, B, E, A, B, C, E. So, this is the second rheogram. Then again, I am going to maintain the shear rate at B for T2 seconds. Okay, for T2 seconds, the shear rate is maintained. Then, we will get another rheogram that is A, B, D, E. So, the third rheogram is A, B, D, E. Okay. Are you listening? Are you following? So, the third rheogram we obtain is A, B, D, E. Again, the shear rate is maintained at B for T2 second. Then, the shear rate decreases. If the shear rate decreases, we will get another rheogram that is a, B, D, E. The structural breakdown with respect to time at a constant shear rate gives this rheogram. Based on this uh, rheogram, we can calculate the thixotropic coefficient using this formula B equal to U1 minus U2 divided by integral T2 divided by T1. Okay, so this is the second method for the measurement of thixotropy. Now, let's see what is the third method. Okay, in this method, the system is subject to two different shear rates, say V1 and V2. Okay, the system is subject to two different shear rates, say V1 and V2. Then, we will get two rheograms like this. And this rheogram shows two hysteresis loop. And with the help of this formula, we can determine the thixotropic coefficient m equal to 2 into u1 minus u2 divided by integral p2 divided by v1 all square. Okay, here u1 and u2 are the plastic viscosities of both the down curve. So, these are the three important methods which are used for the measurement of thixotropy. Hope you all understand. If you have any doubt, please comment below. Thank you for watching. If you not yet subscribed, please do subscribe my channel and hit the bell button too. Thank you.